Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, an aspiring model. I became insta-famous. Claims she's being hacked. Because of all these cyber attacks, my daughter has gone off the deep end. You said this is terrifying, horrible. It's videos, it's pictures, it's the most disturbing thing you could ever imagine. Who's making her private life public? You make a sex tape knowing you're being hacked. You're okay with that? That's the normal thing in a relationship. It's not a normal thing. Are you serious? Has this hacking mystery been solved? We may have found out who's behind us. Oh my God. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Kathy and Randy say their daughter Taylor was a beautiful and happy child who, like many teens, was obsessed with social media. So much so that she would post music videos dedicated to her biggest crush, Justin Bieber. Within a short time, she became Insta-famous with around 30,000 followers. But then things took a very dark turn. Taylor says she began to be bullied in high school. Her house was egged and her car graffitied with the word insta whore. Then according to Taylor, someone anonymously hacked into her computer, deleting all of her social media accounts. Now Taylor and her family say their lives have been put on hold while they deal with hackers who have been stalking them for the past five years. Now, Kathy and Randy say they have no idea who has been tormenting Taylor. They just want it to stop, and they also want her to end her destructive relationship with her boyfriend, Anthony, who they believe is making a bad situation a whole lot worse. Take a look. Growing up, my youngest daughter, Taylor, was an absolute sweetheart. She got good grades, she was well-behaved, she had lots of friends. She was in love with Justin Bieber. I would make Justin Bieber music videos, I would sing and dance to it, and I would post them on YouTube. As a young girl, Taylor wanted to be a model. I grew up in the era of new technology. You could say I'm kind of like a social media kid. And a way to boost her modeling career, she was posting her photos to Instagram. By the time I reached high school, I had about 30,000 followers. To say the least, I became kind of insta-famous. There were definitely people that were jealous of her social media celebrity status. I was bullied. People would egg my house. They wrote horrible things on my car. Whore, slut, you're ugly, I'm your hacker. I just assumed it was mean girls at school. And then her social media started getting hacked. One day I went to my Instagram account and it said that it was deleted. My daughter would create a new account and then that account would get hacked. In the split second, all my followers vanished. Gone. I was mad. I was really upset. Over the years, all this hacking has completely spiraled out of control. I just don't want to leave my house. I don't want to talk to anybody. Now, we're all targets. Our entire family is being turned upside down by cyber attacks. It is what I would call cyber terrorism. They would even go as far as making fake accounts to pretend to be my daughter. And then they would just post horrible things. Slut, whore, she wish she was dead, wish she'd kill herself. Taylor's my younger sister, and I had Snapchat and Facebook Messenger hacked. They start sending messages as if they're me to other people from my own screen name. I worry they have my bank accounts, my credit cards, my social security. They know who cuts my hair, they know who my children are, they know my kids' nicknames. It's terrifying. Well, the family says this has taken an enormous toll on Taylor, who started breaking under the pressure and making some really bad decisions. Over the years, my daughter Taylor has been trying to stay strong, but it's taken an enormous toll on her. A few years ago, she started dating Anthony, who I thought was just a low life. Both my daughter and her boyfriend, Anthony, were doing drugs together. It got really bad. We got her into rehab. She broke up with Anthony. For about a year, she was doing great. 
and then it all fell apart. About six months ago, Taylor started seeing Anthony again. She has spiraled out of control and went back to using drugs. To make things worse, to this day, these crazy cyber attacks continue. We get messages from fake social media accounts telling us our daughter's on drugs, asking us why aren't we helping our daughter? She's in danger. I do know because of all these cyber attacks, my daughter has gone off the deep end. And if it doesn't stop, I feel our entire family will fall apart. Okay, well, it's good to meet y'all, and this has gotten to be a, a really dominant issue with your family, right? Yes, 100%. Yeah. It consumes every single bit of us. Like, every single day we have something new come in. Something I wake hacker. up every day and have something new, something, something hacked. It's, it's awful. I want my family back. Yeah. I want my life back. It's in your different accounts, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Cell phones, basically our cell phones, they get through us it, through Messenger. They're always sending us uh, stuff through Messenger. Right. We have no idea who it is. We see videos of them basically having sex. We see videos, it's pictures. It's it the most gets... disturbing thing you could ever imagine. It's right. awful. Dad to dad, I can imagine, oh, yeah. you, you know, like Very seeing upsetting. that stuff. I, well, yeah, the point I'd want to, I want to go hurt him. And listen, this is a cautionary tale for millions of people out there, right? I mean, because right. there's a lot of folks out there and everybody's on social media. So this right. is a really a cautionary tale. This started as something fun for Taylor, right? It yeah. did. I mean, this wasn't, right. I mean, Aww. this was just a kid mm -hmm. on social media. And let's look at some of the early Instagram photos. This was... 13 to 14. These are some of the early photos Taylor took of herself that she posted on Instagram. Uh, and it got her a lot of followers. Age 13, she YouTube, she has 400 followers. Age 14, around 30,000 uh, followers. And she's posting Justin Bieber videos, you know, kind of lip syncing along to the songs yeah, or singing okay. the songs, just having fun. Yeah. I mean, nothing, no, nothing provocative, by the way. Just, no, it just was fun, all fun, kid then. fun. All fun. Then. I've seen them, just kid fun. Mm -hmm. uh, makeup tutorial videos, yeah. things like that. And then she posted some modeling and daily cute photos of herself and of food. Were you concerned at all that she has, this was an open Instagram account, right? Yeah. So yeah. anybody could look at yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Like, Creepy Creepster could look at it. Absolutely. Her friends at school could look, anybody could anybody, look at it. Anybody, and I don't think, at that point, it was all good. It was fun, you know. Uh -huh. And it is fun until it isn't. Right. That's when it... And you say that then, let's go from virtual world to real world. Some vandals wrote insta -whore on Taylor's vehicle. And then egg your house, egged right? Their house, yep. And that wasn't virtual reality; that was real world. Was, but at that point, it wasn't in depth with the hacking. Mm -hmm. So this is just, I think, the start of it. Of, okay. I think it was high schoolers being yeah. drama. Her classmates knew that she was having a hacking issue. Uh -huh. I mean, I think that was already started. Right. So and to that, them, it was funny. Yeah, it was yeah. funny to them. Okay. So, but now. It's the whole family now getting harassed. All, right? Yeah, now we're yeah. all in it. Right, and okay. I think that's that started because I think she was eliminated. She started to drop off, getting rid of her accounts. And I think that was the next step for them okay. to get to her through us. Well, Kathy and Randy say their daughter, uh, Taylor, went from being a social media star to homeless and not doing anything with her life. Now, that's a long way to fall and it is a huge difference from something that started as fun and really got a lot of success and uh, then all of a sudden you're at the other end of the continuum. So we're gonna talk to Taylor next and see what her thoughts are. I used to be so confident. Now I get hacked at least once a day. I feel like there's microphones and cameras following me. Until all the cyber hacking stops, I can't live my life. And later... Maybe if you guys did make all your videos... Okay, whatever. We made a sex yes. tape. Yes. I'm sorry, but that's a normal thing in a relationship. It is not a normal thing to do. Unless you get hacked. 
There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami yacht part. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter magic cast of wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maximum. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter magic cast a wand. Order now. You've always had my back when I needed you. I know you'll keep Gotham safe. Let's finish what Bruce started. Rated T for teen. Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martell's new boo thing. Oh, she felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martell. Hey, what up? And don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville, new episode, Saturday at 8, 7 central. A few months ago, Taylor was on the West Coast visiting Anthony. My niece got a message from Taylor. She said she was in a lot of trouble. The message also said, please help me, call my dad. My niece knew the situation about the hackers. She asked Taylor a question that only she could answer. And our daughter Taylor knew the answer. My wife and I thought our daughter Taylor's life was in jeopardy. We immediately jumped on an airplane and flew across country. When we reached Taylor, she said that she had never even texted anyone. Her accounts had been hacked. This is what our life has been all about. By 14 years old, Taylor says she already achieved social media fame with around 30,000 followers. And she's now 20 and says photos and video of her continue to go viral, but not by choice. Right. She claims her iCloud has been hacked on three separate occasions and her computer crashed last year, mm -hmm. all by unauthorized users who she suspects are trying to bully her, ruin her reputation, and her life. Take a look. When I think about everything that's been going on in my life the past five years or so, it's a lot. All of this cyberbullying, I feel like it's been a huge blow to my self-esteem. I used to be so confident. Now I'm just down in the dumps. I get hacked at least once a day. I feel like there's microphones and cameras following me. It just makes me very emotional. I get sick to my stomach and I spend a lot of time crying. I feel like until all this cyber hacking stops, I can't live my life. Sure, I admit it. Sometimes I use drugs once in a while, but it's not like an everyday thing. I use Xanax, I use heroin. I think I have my drug use under control. If people think I have a really big drug problem, they're just really making a big deal out of it. I feel like my life has changed for the better since being with Anthony. Anthony has stood by my side through all of this. My family thinks Anthony is a piece of a bad influence on me. They haven't really given Anthony a chance. I would love to marry Anthony, have children with him. My relationship with my parents is pretty non-existent. My mom spent some time judging me. My dad, he's narrow-minded and doesn't really like to think outside of the box. My parents want me to go to school, get a career. What I want is to just live life for a little while. I'm young. Why do I have to figure all this out now? Terry, it's good to meet you. Hi. Uh, you first got on the internet at what age? I was 12? about 12. OK. Yep. It's eight years later. If you knew then what you know now, would you have ever made the first click of the mouse? I really honestly do not think so. Let's look at some of the excerpts of um, Kathy's Facebook concerning Taylor needing help. October 11th, 2014, 
your daughter needs help. Uh, help and not just have her parents spend money on new boobs won't fix an addict. So this is somebody taking you to task, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and you have no idea who that is, right? No, no, I have no idea who it is. And you started getting mixed feedback when you kind of got a lot of people because out of 30,000 people, you're going to get... Right. A lot of hate out of saying that I'm an attention whore, pretty much. Like, I, all, I do all this for attention. There's a Twitter message uh, to Taylor that was a threat just in not too long ago. I'm deleting your Instagram and Facebook literally for being such a bitch. I hacked you, iCloud, and phone. No, the little trick your hacker put on there didn't stop me. Took me a while, but didn't stop me. I'm going to delete all of your blanking pictures and hack all of your blanking. Karma is a bitch. What is that about? What do you so I, I got in contact with this girl that would, because my accounts literally get hacked like at least a couple times a day. So this girl would help me um, get my password back. And what they did, what she did to them is she like locked them out of all their, their um, like accounts and programs that they use to hack my stuff. Because it's not really even through like passwords and, and all that anymore. They use like, programs on computers. Mm -hmm. so they come in the back door. Right, exactly. That's, I've now told you everything I know about computers. <laughs> <laughs> they find a different way in, okay? And at this point, it's mostly Taylor, right? Right. And yeah, you're upset about that. Yeah, absolutely. And then <laughs> you get a boyfriend, Anthony. Yep. You, you guys don't think much of him. No. 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 Not at all. Why do you? And he says that we have never given him a chance. We have. You've not, you've sat down and talked to him once. Taylor. He's, he's been, been to our over Christmases. For he's several. been to our Easter. How about how was Easter for us? Remember that fiasco? The reason I brought up Anthony. <laughs> Uh, which apparently is a hot topic, is because I, I'm trying to, I, I don't look at this just from a cyberbullying standpoint, which is a very big issue for me. We've done shows about it. I've been asked to come to Capitol Hill and I've testified on the reauthorization of the secondary, elementary and secondary education act to get them to allocate money to cyberbullying so we can deal with it in the schools and mm -hmm. I've been very active with this legislatively as well as on this platform. It's a big deal and a big problem and it is a all. Very big and, deal. It, and it has an effect on people's lives just like bullying does and it can cause bad decisions and things to unravel and I think all of this is intertwined and I think you guys do as well. Mm -hmm. now, Anthony is here, and coming up, we're going to meet Anthony and hear exactly why he claims he's not a bad guy, and it was actually Taylor who got him into partying as a wild teen. We'll be right back. About five months ago, I started getting hacked as well. In my opinion, we are just being stalked. Taylor's parents believe that all I'm doing is causing problems in her life. What I want is just to get to the bottom of this hacking stuff and to get Taylor's parents off my back. And later... Get over the fact that I'm with him. With a drug addict? Daughter's a drug addict, too. That's the two choices that is left in Anthony's life. It's death or prison. They lay in bed and start planning his funeral. What do you see when you see yourself? A sidekick, kick, kick. a liability, a monster. monster, a pale imitation. I see more. Master Bruce saw more. He saw the future of Gotham. Rated T for teen. Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maxima. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. 
cool. The Harry Potter magic cast a wand. Order now. Next on Love and Mayor Tonsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martell's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. <laughs> but the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martell. Hey, what up? And don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 central. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness, love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? An all-new Celebrity IOU is here. As new stars go big in giving back. Bam! It made my life. <laughs> Celebrity IOU. All new Monday night at 9 on HGTV. Taylor's boyfriend, Anthony, controls everything our daughter does. When we call her, he's right in her ear, telling her what to say, what to do. I don't trust Anthony. He manipulates, he lies. Anthony's a loser. I credit him for my daughter's demise and her downward spiral. I don't think Anthony and Taylor should be together. Well, Randy and his wife, Kathy, and daughter, Lindsay, say no one in their family trusts youngest daughter, Taylor's boyfriend, Anthony, whatsoever. They claim Taylor, who is a former social media star, has endured a lot of pain after being harassed by cyber hackers for years. But her destructive relationship with Anthony just pulls her down even further. Now, Anthony says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. He has been falsely accused of being a bad influence, and he is never going to leave Taylor. When I think about what's going on, I feel angry. The main thing I want is to figure out who's hacking my girlfriend, Taylor, and myself. About five months ago, I started getting hacked as well. The hackers will message me telling me that I'm a piece of and that my girlfriend's gross. About two years ago, Taylor and I made a video of us making out. Just last week, someone hacked us and was able to get a hold of that tape and release it. They sent it to my 70-year-old grandfather, my parents, Taylor's parents. A lot of people saw it. In my opinion, we are just being stalked, but there's really nothing we can do to stop this. Taylor's parents believe that all I'm doing is causing problems in her life. Taylor's parents are just delusional with the things that they believe about me. What I want is just to get to the bottom of this hacking stuff and to get Taylor's parents off my back. Okay, Anthony, good to meet you. You've nice been listening you. to everything so far, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this I don't really is, agree with anything that's been said so well, far. This is not your fan club over here. No, definitely no. not. Uh, they feel like you are adding to the problem and yeah. not being part of the solution. So yeah. what do you say about all that? Well, I don't really agree with a lot of the things that were said um, that, you know, I got Taylor into a lot of these bad things. I think we both kind of fell into a lot together. But when we first started dating, drugs were never involved. Drugs were never involved. Really? Yeah, at first, when you first met me, I, would n I had never taken an uh, opiate in my life, actually. The first time I ever did was with her. I don't care who handed who the first pill, joint, drug, or whatever. I just, I, I, I just care what it's doing to your lives now. Are you two in a relationship now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, do you live together? Yeah. yeah. We, were, we were out in California. Taylor was with me for about two months. I was out there working. And I moved in with a friend who the hackers ended up telling them that me and this guy are some big drug dealers and we have guns. And then they fly out there thinking I kidnapped her. But these hackers, they make this, these craziest things up. And my mom, too, she will believe it. Like, they'll believe these things. It's like, how is that even, like, rational? If you rational? knew the stuff that we got, you would believe it, too. If it was you, imagine being who our shoes, like. I would Well, you know what? Maybe if you guys did make all true. your videos that you do, and then, you know, and you post and stuff on I, Snapchat, I maybe some of this me. wouldn't be where that it is, is today. That is not me. We made a sex yes, tape. Yes, like, exactly. Really? People, yeah, you know, but like, and you're okay with yeah, that? Posted not, it. Like, that, I'm sorry, but that's probably a norm. Basically not when you're normal. getting no, really. It is not a normal thing yeah. to do. Oh my God, are you serious? In order for somebody to hack something, 
it has to be there to be hacked. Correct. Thank you. So you've got to put something out there in order for them to go get it and distribute it where you didn't intend for it to be distributed. Now, you've been getting hacked since when? For a while, but it's been serious the past, like, year. Okay, so you've been getting hacked for three or four years, really heavily, for over a year. Yeah. And you've been getting hacked. Yeah, even last night I did. Y'all make a compromising videotape, a sex tape, you said. Yeah. Using a... A smartphone. It was just in my camera roll. It was just on my camera roll. I didn't post it anywhere. I mean, but yeah, it's on my camera roll. Which is the on the iCloud. See, which should not be for the public to see. Your own personal iCloud isn't for the public. It got Unless hacked you and, get hacked. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you know you're being hacked, and you make a sex tape and put it on the iCloud, knowing you're being hacked. Kinda, I guess. I wrote down the words y'all used to describe this. You said, this is disturbing, stalked, horrible attack, beyond embarrassing, cyber terrorism, terrifying, enormous toll, off the deep end, <clears throat> spiraling down, falling apart. And you say y'all didn't think about it? I, I just... Well, probably because she wasn't sober. It's... <laughs> I mean, is that, is that true? Oh. Were, were you all high when you did this? Yeah. Every one of them. Yeah. She you would never do that sober, ever. What? He's saying yes. We were high. Yeah, yeah. we were. Yeah. Coming up. <laughs> we'll hear why Anthony's mother, Angie, agrees with Taylor's parents that her son needs to stay away from their daughter. We'll be right back. When I think about what's going on, I feel very scared. My son went from being one of the most popular, likable kid in high school to a complete liar. I do not trust a word that comes out of his mouth. My son and Taylor, they have a very chaotic life together. Closed captioning provided by... Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter magic cast of wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maximum. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter Magic Cast of Wand. Order now. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness love. <laughs> Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami yacht part. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? I'm taking you down bit by bit. I can't wait to see you try. It's only just begun. I've been taught not to open up. Love and Marriage DC returns. What more do I need to give you? With all new episodes. Love and Marriage DC returns January 2023. Part of Real Drama Weekends on OWN. Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martell's new boo thing. Oh! She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martell? Hey, what up? And hey, don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. No matter what part of my story you come in at, I'm always chasing the music. Nobody was trying to find a fat black girl that rapped and sang and played the flute. If I'm on that stage, we're connecting to something higher. The show must go on. You've always had my back when I needed you. I know you'll keep Gotham safe. Let's finish what Bruce started.
Rated T for Teen. This is our best shot. No turning back. Whatever stands in our way, we will defeat it. It's time we raise a little hell. Let's fight like demons. History does not remember blood. It remembers names. I feel like my parents want to blame Anthony for everything. There's a lot of good that I do for Taylor that goes unseen. Her parents see her as this perfect girl, but there's a lot they don't see. I'm far from perfect, and I have my own flaws. I blame Taylor and Anthony. They want us to treat them like adults, but they're not acting like adults. Well, Randy, Kathy, and their daughter, Lindsay, say youngest daughter, Taylor, went from being a really happy social media star to withdrawn and depressed. They believe Taylor's boyfriend, Anthony, is partially, partially responsible for her downfall. They don't blame him for everything. And Anthony's own mother, Angie, says she agrees that this is a toxic relationship. When I think about what's going on, I feel very scared. My son, Anthony, and his girlfriend, Taylor, have been hacked. Recently, I received a sex tape as well. It was a video of Anthony and Taylor on a couch, almost looking like they were trying to make a porn video or something. The videos and photos are so disturbing. It is beyond embarrassing. My son went from being one of the most popular, likable kid in high school to a complete liar. In the past, he's had some run-in with drugs. He got clean, but he always seems to go right back to using again. I have to admit, I've enabled my son and Taylor. I pay for Anthony and Taylor's cell phones, but I have stopped giving them money. My son and Taylor, they have a very chaotic life together. They're very unstable. Either one of them has a job. I do not trust a word that comes out of his mouth. I'm so concerned I track my son's phone. Four to five times a day, I will check in and see where he's at and what he's doing. I've tried everything I know how to do to get my son's life together, but it seems like nothing works. All I want is for this hacking to stop. Angie, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, obviously, you want this hacking to stop. You think this is not a healthy relationship for either one of them, correct? Why? I feel like they're as addicted to each other as they are the drugs. I, I, I kind of made a list of the reasons that I've gotten from you guys about why you think this relationship is toxic. I, I don't have to go through them all. Uh, but it's like, according to the family, that it's codependent, that they are too absorbed in each other, bad relationship with her family, do drugs together, unemployed, no college education, which means limited future, homeless, according to Angie. Wrecked three vehicles. I've never uh, crashed a vehicle ever. Uh, Anthony is um, a liar, manipulative thief, possibly influencing Taylor's drug use. According to Kathy, Anthony introduced Taylor to heroin. According to Randy, Anthony controls Taylor with drugs, wrecked his vehicle three times, keeps Taylor away. According to Lindsay, relationships about sex and drugs. Uh, I mean, it just kind of goes on lots of reasons. Do y'all trigger each other? A little bit, I'd say. Yeah. Whether they like him or not, like, just get over the fact that I'm with him. Get over the fact you're with a drug addict? <laughs> Daughter's a drug addict, too, then, if exactly. I am. Exactly. What's your point? We're not saying she isn't. I've got two young people here that <clears throat> seem to me to be bright, capable young people that if they can get out of their own way, can get their lives together and this is be nothing more than a hiccup. But if not, you can wind up in a really bad place or I worse. I feel like that's the two choices that is left in Anthony's life. It's death or prison. I feel like that's the point we've come to. Yeah. And it's very, very terrifying that those are the two things. Especially when we don't hear from them for yeah. months. I've just gotten to the point that I recently lay in bed and start planning his funeral. Like, who am I going to have be as Paul Bears? What songs would I have sung? Like, that's to the point I'm currently at right now. I feel like that's the hackers make this 10 times more extreme than it is. 
Well, hackers have nothing to do right now with you guys' drug <laughs> addiction. I mean, who's behind all of this? Well, my team launched an investigation into this matter, and we're going to reveal the results because we just may have found out who's behind all this. Oh, my God. Closed captioning provided by... There is nothing hotter than real, honest-to-goodness love. Mama want to tell you where it's at. I want to get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview, and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martel's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martel. Hey, what up? And don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. What do you see when you see yourself? A sidekick? A liability? A monster? A pale imitation? I see more. Master Bruce saw more. He saw the future of Gotham. Rated T for Teen. Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maximum. Sounds. Media Loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Order now. I'm taking you down bit by bit. I can't wait to see you try. <laughs> it's only just begun. The $10,000 question is who in the world is doing all this? For a long time, I thought Anthony was behind all this, but he is really not that smart. We've tried working with the police, but they say they need evidence and proof. I wonder what the police are going to say if somebody turns up dead. My husband and I have even considered getting a private investigator to help us out. We don't even know where to start or where to look or how to find one. This hacking um, that we're talking about here, um, has been going on a long time. You say it's really pulled your family um, apart. Consumed our family. Taylor, you've been talking to someone named Yes. Correct? Yes. Tell me about that. I've talked to her probably like every day since I've met her. I guess I've never met her. I've never talked to her on the phone. Yeah. And how'd she present herself? Um, it was through, she messaged me on Twitter because it was how she, got hired to hack me and then ended up like kind of reversing and helping me with it because she felt bad because she was... This is a person was hired to hack you? Yep, yep. Well, we hired an investigative team, um, an investigative team that specializes in cyber investigations. Oh. So what? did you figure out who it was then? Yeah, I know who it is. And I can't say it on yeah. the air, but I can tell you privately. Okay. But it ain't What? We now want to introduce you to licensed private investigators Kevin and Lori Rogers from Magnum Investigations Plus. Now, they are based outside of your hometown and have agreed to take on your case. They're going to join us now via Skype. Kevin, Lori, tell me what your take is so far. My first take is, this is a 21st century version of a prank or obscene phone call, except Taylor is giving them the means 
to do whatever that is that they're doing. And uh, Taylor, you mentioned your microphones and your camera. You feel like that people are following you or constantly watching you, but you're providing the means for that. It's like writing it on a bathroom wall or a big billboard and it blasts into everybody. So my first comment would be, well, how important is social media? Do you really need to have social media right now? Can you just get rid of it? I mean, I, I could. And it's a family too. We did a check last night. Even your Facebooks aren't secure. There's things you should be doing security to shut down. But first of all, everybody should get rid of all their social media altogether. Now, you guys work with the police a lot on these matters. Are these crimes committed by people that know the victims, or are they committed by people that are anonymous that don't know them? I want to say this age group right here, it's, it's by people that are vindictive to these people. You know, it, it's... Um, the age range, the same age group. But social media runs so far and wide, of course, around the world, you can get contacts from anybody that just decide they didn't like your face and they're going to make your life miserable for reasons that, no reason other than they're bored. What the investigative team that is handing this off to these good folks to close this case, um, they found you guys beyond vulnerable here. <laughs> that your iCloud is not secure at all. Yeah. A child can get to this information uh, that you guys have. The security is not there. You need a two-step login, which you don't have. There's currently storing personal data that's easy to steal. Uh, the team called uh, all alleged harassing numbers, and these are Google numbers. So these are not, a lot of these numbers are not tied to people. They're numbers that are internet numbers and they're not tied to a geographical location or an individual, so they're unreachable. So what can Taylor do to start improving her life? Well, I'm gonna tell her what I think when we come back. Why me, huh? Why not you? Hey, yo. Listen to the thunder. An all new celebrity IOU is here. New stars go big in giving back. Bam! It made my life. <laughs> Celebrity IOU. All new Monday night at 9 on HGTV. No matter what part of my story you come in at, I'm always chasing the music. <laughs> Nobody was trying to find a fat black girl that rapped and sang and played the flute. If I'm on that stage, we're connecting to something higher. The show must go on. Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview, and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martell's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martell. Hey, what up? And don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? You've always had my back when I needed you. I know you'll keep Gotham safe. Let's finish what Bruce started.
Nothing can stop what's coming. Rated T for Teen. Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maxima. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Order now. I want to talk to you two. Mm -hmm. You say you want them to accept him. How's that going to fix this drug issue? I don't really think drugs is the issue. I think everything else makes it, me want to just mask feelings. I agree it's all balled up together. I do agree with that. I just want to address the drug use as like, yeah, when we were together the time before this, it was really bad. Like, we were both like just complete, like, you know, to a point where we get withdrawals and we were just fiends straight up, steal, do whatever. We came back home, started living with my cousin, which we still where we're at right now. And it's not like, like somebody, I don't know, it's so hard. Like, no, none, none of them understand. None of them have been an addict. Like, it's so hard once you, I'm not like saying, oh, poor me, pity me. Like, but it is like, it's just like always in your head. Like, I can't. I don't want to, you think I want to live? Like, you think we want to live at my cousin's house on a no. mattress on the floor? Like, we don't, like, do you think we, she doesn't want to talk to her parents, have a relationship with her sister who used to be, like, her best friend? Like, she tells me these things, like, obviously I want to, but, like, she has to choose. Like, that's what it comes down to. Is, like, that's what she feels like. She has to choose them or me. Would you all like to know what I think? Yeah. Would yep. you like to know what I think? Yep. First off, I, I think the... The cyberbullying stuff has been a stress in your life. I, I think it really has. Um, and I think that's going to get resolved. I think, I think the two of you are addicts. And I think you both have very low self-esteem. I think you both have really low self-worth. I do think you are codependent. I do think you're triggering each other. And I don't think you have a clue whether or not you have a genuine affection for each other, a genuine affinity for each other, and you won't know until you are clean and sober and clear-brained and clear-eyed. Right here is uh, Dr. Kaligi. He is the founder of Creative Care, which is a premier treatment center uh, in Malibu specializing in mental health and substance abuse. And uh, Dr. Kaligi, I, I have asked you to be here today because I think your cutting edge, terrific facility uh, would be a great opportunity uh, for Taylor to get her feet on the ground and get herself worked out. What do you think? You know, without a doubt. So I, I agree with everything Dr. Phil said, Taylor, and I think it's just been a, a lots of stuff going on and we need to sort things out and I think addiction is at the bottom of the issue. And, that needs to be dealt with before you know whether you're going to have a future together or not. I also ask uh, Dr. Brooke Bucola, who is here, the Chief Clinical Officer of Pace Recovery Center, specializing in substance abuse as well. You know, Anthony, I, I think, has got um, some real issues rolled up in his addiction. I think it is chronic. I think this is a chronic disease with him. Is he a fit for you guys? Absolutely. Anthony, we're, we're prepared and excited for you to hopefully take advantage of this opportunity. And just as Dr. Phil said, the first step is getting this addiction under wraps and giving you the appropriate coping skills to deal with your addictive behavior. And then moving on on a therapeutic level, giving you uh, great therapeutic coping skills to deal with emotions. I can't compel you to do it. They can't compel you to do it. You have to be mature enough to do it on your own and I want to do it with you, not to you. So I'm making you that offer as our gift to you. Would you like to do this? This is really hard. It's your chance, you guys. You'll never get another chance like this in your Don't career. screw this up. What do you have to say? I don't know. It's a lot. Are you kidding me? Some of the best places in the country, you'll never get that kind of help. Don't you want to live a normal life? 
you both told me you don't want to go back to the LA. I want to hear what he has to say. Why? Tay, don't make a decision on what Anthony wants to do. Please. What do you have to say, Anthony? It's a lot to think about right now. Closed captioning provided by... An all-new celebrity IOU is here. As new stars go big in giving back. Bam! It made my life. <laughs> celebrity IOU. All new Monday night at 9 on HGTV. Ready for more drama? Ready to Love returns with an all-new season. Coming January 2023. Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martell's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martell. Hey, what up? And don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 central. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness, love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? What do you see when you see yourself? A sidekick? A liability? A monster? A pale imitation? Master Bruce saw more. He saw the future of Gotham. Rated T for teen. Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter magic caster wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maximum. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Order now. Our worth is not given. It must be made. This is your chance. Our best shot. Surprise! This is going to be one of the best days of our lives. It speaks volumes to me that I'm offering the woman you supposedly love an opportunity to get healthy and you don't rush to put her on the path to wellness. You said if I if I go, she will. Yeah. So what's good enough? That's then, that's sick. all we need, isn't it? So Taylor, your answer is yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm proud of you for making that answer. Really okay. So Anthony, this is too much for you to think about. I'll go. Yeah. You I want to thank all of my guests today, including the founder of Creative Care, uh, Dr. Kaligi, uh, and Dr. Mannion. Thank you. I didn't say hello to you. Hi, it's Dr. good to Phil. see you again. Thank, thank you. you so much for being here, for offering services for Taylor's work and recovery, uh, as well as Chief Clinical Officer Dr. Bricola. Thank you so much. And also CEO <laughs> Lenny Siegel. Thank you uh, at Pace Recovery Center for offering resources for Anthony's recovery. Also, I want to offer uh, my thanks to the friends at Magnum Investigations. 
uh, plus Kevin and Lori Rogers for offering to help to try and resolve this cyber crime. These guys up here are going to be working with you to wrap this up and get this done. Uh, the jig is up to Thank this and what the so deal much. is. Thank you so much. Thank you. What's up with your sad face? Well, you know, the holidays are well behind us, and quite honestly, I miss the presents. I got nothing. You're out of luck with me, girl. <laughs> well, it's not so much the getting, it's the giving. Oh, you're going to give something away? I have one of my favorite, and it's HydroQuint. It is a nighttime serum that goes to work while you're sleeping to moisturize that dull, dry skin. So. What do you think about that? So you give it out to uh, you give it out to everybody in the audience. Everyone. All right, there you go. All right. That makes me happy. And if you at home want to get Hydra Quench, you can go to RobinMcGallRevelation.com. And Robin and I would like to see you here in our studio audience. Just go to DrPhil.com, click on Get Tickets. We'll see you next time. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Black Americans intentionally discriminated against at every step of the home buying process. The value of my home is not indicative on the color of my skin. Bias in real estate. You guys told this agent we were prepared to pay cash. Yes, we were still denied. We were blocked that day. What happened when a real estate agent was recorded on camera during an undercover investigation? Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. Get ready to take care of you. People are raised to go to school, get a job, get married, and then get a house, right? It's part of the American dream, but not anymore. For the first time, home ownership is out of reach for most people, and Americans are not putting up with it. Prospective buyers and housing protesters are demanding that something be done about this issue. But what if I told you there is a group of Americans who have always dealt with real estate and housing injustices. Imagine always being priced out, even if you have the money, or not being sold a home, even if there isn't a housing shortage. You got the money, they got the houses, but you can't buy one. What if I told you black Americans have been systematically and intentionally discriminated against for generations at every step of the home buying process, resulting in a 30% gap in home ownership rates between black and white citizens? Would that shock you? Well, some of my guests today say despite laws to reduce discrimination and practices like redlining, Many real estate agents, brokers, and loan officers still engage in unequal treatment. Some bankers who give different interest rates to appraisers who lower property values based on race and ethnicity. These biases continue to play a role in real estate transactions even today. Take a look. America has a major racial wealth gap. The typical black family has only a fraction of the wealth of the typical white family. And many experts say that the root of that problem is real estate. The gap could be widening between black and white neighborhoods. 
One of the drivers of that wealth gap is redlining. For decades, the U.S. government rated many minority neighborhoods, delineated in red, too risky for mortgage lending, blocking many black Americans from building wealth through home ownership. Redlining was outlawed in 1968, but its impact remains. Today, nearly 75% of white Americans own their home versus 44% of black Americans. Although the practice was outlawed in 1968, its effects are still being felt today. I think you see it in every city in America. I mean, this is where um, the basis of segregated neighborhoods remains to this day. So you still are living with the generational divide and, and the wealth gap that happens because of that. Despite the practice being illegal, black loan applicants are still turned away by banks at a higher rate than white applicants. The widespread use of redlining has allowed generations of white Americans to build wealth through equity in homes and businesses, further widening a wealth gap African Americans have yet to rebound from. 74% of white Americans now own their home versus just 44% of black Americans. Now, there's a problem somewhere here. And instead of being defensive, we need to start being part of the solution. Let's treat ourselves and others with dignity and respect. Let's not just be quiet so others can remain comfortable. What I'm talking about here, as I said before, is how would you feel if you could not buy a home or keep the home you own because of what you look like? My first guest, Keisha, says after her grandfather Daniel passed away in 2020, she inherited his home in a multi-million dollar neighborhood in Seattle. She says what happened next was heartbreaking and alarming. Take a look. Dr. Phil, about two years ago, my life was turned upside down when I inherited my grandfather's multi-million dollar home. My grandfather bought this home in 1968 and I literally grew up right here. I took my first steps downstairs. When he passed away, I inherited his home as the sole heir. The challenges of inheriting a family home came with a tax. The day after my grandpa passed away, I started receiving letters from people attempting to buy his house. One stated that I was behind in my taxes, which I was not. Companies were trying to pose as financial institutions, often to get you into reverse mortgages. One neighbor literally sent a letter expressing their condolences, but then offering to buy the house. They offered me $800,000, which is a lot of money, but it was a slap in the face because in this neighborhood, I know my house is worth almost $2 million. Their actions really showed you don't want me here. I believe that those letters were not random. They know for sure who is inheriting and what. We are a black family in a community that used to be all black. Then the state of Washington started to investigate me. They believed that there was potential elderly financial abuse and they literally froze all of my accounts. I was under investigation for about a year. So in 2021, I decided to remodel the house. I thought that, okay, I'm a really good candidate for a renovation loan. I have an 820 credit score. This house is worth almost $2 million. I was denied for loans repeatedly, 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 repeatedly. The emotional toll that went along with inheriting my grandfather's house were so much more than I can bear. I've had to fight for myself every step of the way. I don't want other people to have to keep fighting. You should be able to have peace in your grief. Well, Keisha, it's good to meet you. Good to meet you too, Dr. Phil. Uh, I'm uh, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you so uh, much. I, I really am, and uh, you're you're right. You should have peace in your grief, mm -hmm. and you shouldn't be uh, subject to predatory people circling around you the minute yeah. something like that happens. That yeah. was bothersome to you. It really was, yeah. And you think all or most of it was racially driven. I think there was a lot of it that was definitely racially driven, for sure. What do you think was the most transparent, uh, racially motivated attempt to exploit you? Yeah, there were, you know, when my grandpa passed away, there were letters that came immediately after he passed away. Um, and 
to be in an area of Seattle where these are black families used to be, they're not anymore. Um, the letters were very clear, like, we don't want you here. There was one in particular that was just heartbreaking. And then going to apply for a loan and realizing that, hey, to get an appraisal, one of the requests is either don't let them in or don't let them know whose house it is and what type of family lives there. Remove the pictures that look like you. And understanding what I know and being educated, that means we need you to not show that this is a black home because a black home is going to be valued less. The value of my home is not indicative on the color of my skin. But the truth is, we have empirical evidence as yeah. well as anecdotal case studies right. that show exactly that. If, if you hide the fact that this is a black-owned home, yeah. the appraisal is likely to be higher right. than if you don't hide that fact, which is a sad yeah. chronicle of affairs. How many times did you try to get loans to renovate that home? Oh, my God. I would say probably 12. And I've been a homeowner since I was 21 years old. So this is not new to home ownership. I understood what costs were gonna be needed and went to the bank, had all my papers. I'm a full-time entrepreneur, but I'm very good on my accounting and things. Denied, 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 denied. And this house is paid off. So there's no mortgage, it's just full equity. And I'm like, to not be able to tap the equity, what's going on here? I barely had any debt. I should have been a, Perfect candidate for Perfect her. Perfect candidate. Yeah. I mean, you, you, 